everyone. It's been about six months since I've introduced myself. My name is Anna and this is a channel mostly about knitting but quite a bit of sewing and even some spinning and weaving too. I live in Minneapolis with my partner, my cat, and my two dogs. It's been quite some time since I have done kind of a podcast style video. I know there's actually been a lot of debate on the internet lately over the use of the term podcast, so I'm going to try to use the word vodcast, which sounds very foreign in my mouth, but maybe we'll get used to it. Anyways, I've been doing a lot of blogging or vlogging style, um, but I kind of miss just sitting down and chatting about everything I'm working on at once, so that's what we're going to do today. I do have some fun ideas for this summer though for future vlogs, so if that's what you like, you'll get more of that too. Anyways, let's start with what I'm wearing. This is the Sungazer sweater by James N. Watts. I knit this up using Malabrigo Susoro. I won't go too much into this just because I talked about it in my last episode. Um, but yeah, I actually wasn't even expecting to wear this today. It's been like 40 degree weather this week and randomly today it's going to be 73 and then it goes back down into like the 40s next week. So really excited that I finally get to wear my summer knits in real life and not just like in a photo and take it off right away. <laughs> but anyways, let's jump right into my finished objects. All right, so the first one is the the Snarness by Gudrun Johnston from the Shetland Trader book. And I'll show you the cover of that right here. Um, I've been wanting to make something out of this book for quite some time, and I landed on the easiest pattern. And the reason why is because I needed a break from one of my whips, which I'll talk about later in this episode. But yes, let me show you this again. So I actually ended up making this with the leftover yarn I had from the Sun Gazer. This is the Malabrigo Tesoro in Tiger, no, Fire Agate is the colorway, which is absolutely beautiful. It's kind of a variegated color, which probably isn't the best for lace work because it kind of takes away from the pattern of the lace, which is kind of a floral look. And actually I'll show you what it's supposed to look like in the book here so you can get a good idea of it. There you go. So yeah, you can kind of see the pattern in there. Um, but that's okay. It just looks airy and bright and I really love it. I am happy that it's made of a silk blend too because I mostly intend to wear it as like a headscarf. Um, if you want to see that, you can take a look at my Instagram. I put a picture of me wearing it. You could also wear it as like a bandana like this, so it's very versatile. This isn't really my style, so I probably would just wear it as the headpiece, but you never know. Um, I do think I'm going to make it in this color as well, just for more contrast with my hair and so you can see that lace pattern a bit more too. But this is a great stash busting project. As you can tell, I literally did that. I think I only ended up using about 50 grams and I still have this much left over. And that's after knitting this tee and this. And it was all just from one skein. So there's still something to make this with. I don't even know what I would make with that quite yet. But yeah, highly recommend this. Really fun, quick pattern. Um, I thought it was kind of cool too. It's like a mini shawl. And I actually have never knit a shawl yet, but it is something that I really want to do. So I guess this was like a good intro into it. Um, yeah, 
the next finished object I have is just a pair of socks. Um, I shouldn't say just a pair of socks, but I do knit these a lot. They're the Everyday Sock by Andrea Maury of Dre Renee Knits. This has easily become my favorite sock pattern. I've knitted so many times that I pretty much have it memorized. Um, but yeah, I did end up making these a little too big. I knit the foot too long so the heel sits up higher than I want it to. They still work great and I'm just wearing them in boots, but I did take notes of the measurements so now I know what not to do the next time I knit them. I ended up using Pat Tone's Croy Sock yarn, which is a great option if you want more of a budget-friendly sock, but not only was it like good in price, I think it's like $6.99 a skein and it takes two skeins to knit this, but for sock yarn standards, I think that's pretty good. Um, but I made another pair in another color and I've worn those things so many times under boots, walking all over the place, and I haven't seen any wear or tear in the heel. Um, so they're very durable socks as well. I haven't been brave enough to try to throw these in the washroom dryer. I just don't want to really take that chance. So I just have been hand washing them each time. And actually, I heard a really good tip from Andrea Mari herself saying every time she washes her socks, she just kind of gathers them and throws them in whenever she's blocking something. So you can kind of like reuse the same water and just wash everything at once instead of like specifically washing each hand knit sock because that would take a long time. But yeah, I have been on a major hunt for sock yarn. I just love knitting socks. They're just the perfect to go project. So I ended up buying some yarn from Hedgehog Fibers. Super colorful yarn. I really want to make the Curio Sock by Andrea Mari again. Um, I made a pair this last fall as a gift for somebody, but I really want a pair for myself. And I've been meaning to just knit with really colorful, variegated yarn, but the only way that I would really wear that is on my feet and not so much a garment. Um, I've been watching a lot of the Unraveled podcast, I think is what it's called. I'll put the name down here. Um, but she's a newer podcaster and she knits so many colorful pieces and I just get so envious of the yarn. Like it makes me really want to knit with color instead of some neutrals. So that's kind of my way that I'm going to do that. Um, I also bought some more sock yarn from Pearl Soho and I also bought some from an indie dyer called Paisley Knits or it's Pasley Knits. She is doing a monthly yarn club. I only signed up for one month, but each month is a different theme, all related around Greek mythology, which I think is really cool. And her mood boards that she posts on her Instagram for each month are just so inspiring. And the yarn that she makes really does reflect those mood boards. She does a really good job. So I'm really excited for this yarn. I have no idea when I'm going to get it. Um, I, it was just a pre-order. So I guess it'll be a fun surprise in the mailbox whenever it does show up. Moving on to my one and only whip so far. I am making the Favo sweater by Lerka from Fiber Tales, and I'll start a picture of it right here on what it will look like when it's all done. And yeah, so I will first show you how far I've got, and I've gotten pretty far, um, but this is the front panel. It's knit bottom up flat so it's uh, all in pieces that I will sew together in the end and here is the cable pattern in the front 
Sorry, the lighting isn't great. It's pretty cloudy today here. And then it has a honeycomb brioche on both of the sides. I will show you the back one as well. So here's the back panel, which did end up puckering quite a bit, and that's from this really cool braid. Oh my god, I had so much fun making this braid. But I'm hoping it'll black out. I'm pretty sure it will, but if it doesn't, no big deal. It's just the back. Um, so this is the back piece. And then I finished one of the sleeves here. And then I'm right in the middle of the second sleeve. So as you can see, it's a ton of honeycomb brioche, which kind of is starting to drive me crazy. Um, it's a four row repeat, and it's actually kind of hard to tell which row you are on, um, at least for me. And if you mess it up, it's also even harder to rip back and fix where you made the mistake because of just, I don't know, how it is. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of experience with honeycomb brioche, so I guess now I do. But I got really frustrated making this because I just kept making mistakes and it was looking bad. I mean, you can kind of see some of them, like here and here, there's some scar tissue is what I've been calling it. Um, which, it's okay, we all have scars and this sweater's going to as well, but I got frustrated, so I decided to just um, take a break, knit the headscarf just as a little palette cleanser, um, and that's just what I needed because once I was done with that, I was ready to take it on again, and I ended up coming up with a way to kind of help me know where I'm at. With the honeycomb brioche. What I did was I put a stitch marker on at the beginning of the row and if I moved the stitch marker to be right in front of the first stitch that meant I was on the first row and then on the second row I moved it to the second stitch so I knew I was on the second row so if I kind of forgot which row I was in in the middle of the row which happened a lot I could just refer back to this and then it goes up to four stitches in the row repeat so this tells me right now that I just finished doing the fourth row and I kind of had that idea because I've seen the types of stitch markers that have the numbers on it that you kind of flip with each row that you do, but I didn't have one of those stitch markers in the moment, so this was a good option. Um, so once I kind of came up with that and I had more confidence of which row I was on, I started knitting it up so much quicker and I did not get sick of it as fast. But now that I'm on the second sleeve, I'm kind of getting sick of it again. But I don't really have much to go. I did just finish all of the increases. So now I just have to knit normal in the honeycomb brioche stitch until it's at the length. And then I sew it all together and then knit up the neckline and it's done. The yarn that I'm using, let me just reach down and grab here, is actually some yarn that I unraveled from a sweater that I thrifted. And I've talked about this yarn a lot, but just as a refresher, I found a Men's Gap 100% lamb's wool sweater from a thrift store that I got for $12. And I ended up unraveling the whole thing and washing it and skeining it up. I skeined it up first and then I washed it to get all the kinks out. And I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. I was a little nervous that it was going to be splitty, but it's not. And actually, it kind of reminds me of the consistency of the Nutidin yarn. So anyone 
who's really obsessed with the Nutidin. This would be a good project because it reminds me of it and it's just really squishy and fluffy and lightweight. So good option if you do want to make this sweater. But yeah, I think it's really cool how well this worked. And it's definitely something that I'm going to keep an eye out for when I'm at the thrift store for any just 100% wool sweaters that I can unravel and turn into something a little bit more fresh and something that I would want to wear. In my last episode, I talked about how I wasn't going to buy any yarn because Mitch and I are trying to buy a house. So we're trying to save up as much money as we can. But with every offer we put in that gets outbid, I have been treating myself here and there just a little bit to keep me happy. So I did end up buying some yarn. <laughs> and I got um, some Retro Zaria Pegul Haul. In these two colors so this one is light brown number four and this one is orange number two and these are just a hundred percent wool and I think it's a fingering weight I don't know but this is a brand that I've always wanted to try I think specifically because I just love their images on their tags. I think they're really cool. And I think, is this Capricorn? Kind of looks like one. And I'm a Capricorn, so I don't know, meant to be, I guess. The other thing I really love about this is the smell. Look, I'm always watching people talk about the smell of the yarn, and now I totally get it. I just want to, like, bury my face in this. I do have plans for what I'm going to make with this. I'm going to make the Forced Keys Vest by Tetis Knit Garden, and I'll insert a picture of it here. Um, the moment I saw this, I think it was like a few months ago is when I first saw it, I wanted to make it, and now I'm just on this whole summer knit vibe right now, and it's the perfect time to make one. Um, I know it's 100% wool and it's not perfect for summer, but it still is pretty cool here and it's probably going to be until June. Um, our spring weather is just all over the place, so I think I'll still be able to get a lot of wear out of it and then it'll just be really nice to have next fall as well. I do have other knitting plans coming up as well. I am so excited because I finally got accepted to knit for my first test knit. Um, it's the first time I applied for one. I've always wanted to do it. It sounds really fun to just be part of the process. And so I'm going to be making the Rib Lace Raglan by James and Watts. This is a summer knit tee, which there is a hack to do the long sleeve as well, but I'm just going to do the short sleeve. I don't have my yarn yet. I just ordered it from Pearl Soho and I'm waiting to get it in, but I'm sure I'll have it completely knit up by my next episode because the test knit due date is June 1st. So once I get that yarn in, I'm going to start right away on it. Next up is the sewing portion of the episode. Um, I do have a finished object, which I'm actually holding the Favo sweater in, and that is this bag here, which again, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this already, but I haven't really had a chance to talk about it yet. So this is the Zero Waste Stash Bag by Baguettes. I have made this before in the small size, and this is the large size. I sewed it up using a canvas. I don't know the brand of it. I did try looking it up in the past, but the website doesn't really list the brand. I got it from my local fabric shop, uh, Lakes Makery in South Minneapolis, but yeah, I absolutely love this bag. It's super cool. 
It has all of these little pockets here, so you could put like scissors here, or some knitting needles and these smaller ones, and it kind of connects up here to be able to have something really long in it as well. And the straps are really cool, they're just little knots that are holding on to that. And there is some pockets on the inside. However, they're really shallow. Oh, let me see. They're really shallow, nothing really stays in here. And that could have been my error, but I don't know, everything else lined up, so I don't know why the interior pockets are so shallow. That's the one thing I would probably modify is to have it deeper so it can hold things a little better, smaller things like stitch counters. Um, okay, so my next pattern I am so excited about. And this is the whole reason why I ended up getting a sewing machine in the first place. I'm making my first quilt. Here it is. <laughs> I am absolutely obsessed with this. So I expressed interest to my dad many years ago that I wanted to start making quilts. And he actually bought me a sewing machine for that reason. And it took me like four years to finally get around to it. And here we go. So this is the Broken Dishes pattern by Pearl Soho. And it's one of the easiest patterns I could find just starting out. It's literally just triangles. You could probably figure it out without even using a pattern. But it probably explains why it's a free pattern. I am just absolutely obsessed with this though. More or less the process of it, it's just very meditative. You're just sewing a bunch of triangles together so you can really just get lost in your thoughts and your hands just kind of take over and do all of the work for you. Um, I do plan on hand quilting this. I think it's kind of a rite of passage into the quilting world. Um, I don't have a long arm or anything like that so I don't really feel like doing this on my little old sewing machine. I think I'm going to do like kind of a yellow or a more muted tanny yellow for the back of it just as a solid color just to keep it simple. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm working on here. And I was thinking about gifting this, but since it's my first quilt ever, I kind of want to keep it for myself. And I think it kind of matches my aesthetic with all of my decor too. Um, so pretty excited about this. I'm probably gonna continue working on it after I film today. That's pretty much everything that I have to share today. Um, this is everything that I've been working on for the past month. I know that I do want to pick up some old projects like I've been spinning some yarn on a hand spindle for a while or a drop spindle. Um, I've been weaving a bit too so and there's a whole other scarf that I was designing like last fall that kind of fell off but I still love it so much so I want to keep working on that as well. But now I have all of these other projects on the queue so who knows what I'll get around to. Sometimes I wish I didn't have a full-time job and I could just craft all day long, but that is reality and all I can do is what I can do. Um, thank you though for returning viewers or if you're new here and you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and you won't miss out on any other content. Um, I hope you all are having a great spring and enjoying your weekend. Mm -hmm.